Hello there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Now, I don't know if you're like me, but I have loads of SD cards. I've got SD cards in my cameras that I'm using to record. I've got SD cards in my phones, in my family phones. I've got SD cards that I use to transfer things between like, my MacBook and things like that. I've got SD cards in laptops that don't come with much built-in memory, but you can add an SD card to expand their memory. I've got SD cards everywhere. And I'm always looking for the biggest and the fastest SD cards that I can afford. Well, some interesting news today, the SD Card Association have released the version seven of their specification that has added a whole new bunch of features to the SD card uh, whole ecosystem. So if you wanna find out more about SD Card 7, please let me explain. First of all, some uh, context, you all know that an SD card are these small uh, memory cards. They also come in the micro SD card format, which is even tinier that you kind of mainly put in your mobile phone. And that uh, the different cards have different capacities and different speeds. Now, the speed of the memory often depends on the price that you're paying for the card. But then there's also the interface between the card itself and what they call the host, which might be a USB adapter, or it might be something built in directly into your laptop or your PC. And that host connection happens here with these pins on the back. They're able to be used so that the uh, card can talk to the outside world. Now, every so often the SD Association release a new specification that adds kind of greater capacities, greater speeds, and greater capabilities. Now today with SD card uh, version seven, we've now got SD Express, which is a brand new, completely new direction that the SD Card Association are going because it adds PCI Express and NVM Express directly into the host protocols of the SD card. So we're talking about the same protocols that you can get kind of in your uh, computer, in the desktop on the PCI bus, and the same protocols that you get for these kind of built-in SSD drives that you can connect directly to the uh, PCI Express bus. And the amazing thing is the theoretical throughput speed of these is 985 megabytes a second, not megabits a second, 985 megabytes a second. And so by adding in the uh, NVM Express, the non-volatile memory express specification, we're now entering an era where it's possible to turn SD cards into removable SSD drives, which really is an amazing uh, uh, advancement. Now, when you look at a traditional SSD card, you're used to kind of seeing that row of pins along the top. But a couple of years ago, the SSD Association introduced the idea of the ultra high speed two bus. Now, when you have a UHS-2 bus, there's actually now a second row of pins along underneath those first ones that can be used to increase the throughput even more. Now, with SD7, what's actually happening is they are repurposing those second row of pins to allow the PCI bus and the MVM Express protocol to talk over those additional pins. Now, the upshot of this now is that UHS-2 and UHS-3 cards are not speed compatible with SD Express cards. SD Express is taking a whole new direction, repurposing those pins for something completely different. Now the top row of pins remain the same. So you can take basically any card that you've got and you can still stick it into any reader and you're still gonna be able to transfer the data back and forth, but it depends on what speed that's going to happen. So by using that first row of normal SD uh, card pins, then there's backwards compatibility across all of these things. But let's have a look at a table now that explains the speed of these new cards. So along the top here, we have the host, that means the computer, what it can support. And down the left-hand side, we have the physical card, what you're plugging in. Obviously, these first two are basically SD card with the 50 uh, megabytes a second and 104 megabytes a second uh, specifications. And of course, if you stick a 50 megabytes a second card into any slot, you're still only gonna get 50 megabytes a second out of it. But the important thing is here, when we go down to, let's say, UHS-2, if you stuck that into a UHS-2 computer, you'd be able to get up to 312 uh, megabytes a second. But if you now stick that same card into an SD Express interface, you only get 104 megabytes a second, which is actually the same as what you'd get with this, uh, the older UHS-1 interface. And it works the other way as well. If you take an SD Express 
a card and stick it into an old laptop or something, you're only gonna get 50 megabytes a second or maybe 104 megabytes a second, depending on the interface that's got. But now when you plug it into an SD Express compatible computer with a PCI Express interface, you're gonna get 985 uh, megabytes a second, theoretically up to 985 uh, megabytes a second. So what this really means is that you'll still be able to read your SD cards just about anywhere. You can even take an SD Express card and stick it into an old laptop and it'll still be able to read it. But now if you've invested in UHS-2 or UHS-3, that lifetime of that seems now to be shortened because the new direction for that second row of pins is now SD Express. And that's the one that's gonna give us the maximum uh, possible throughput and reusing those pins for the PCI Express interface now, rather than the alternative uh, UHS-2 or UHS-3 uh, interfaces. But just remember here we're talking about the speed of the interface. So that's the speed of the way the data is transferred from the memory on the card through to the, let's say, the computer or the camera or whatever. The speed of that actual memory is a whole different story. And if you remember, there are class types that tell you the speed of the memory. We used to have sort of class two and four and six and then 10. And then we had U1 and U3. And these were the ways of telling us the actual read and write speed that you can get from that card. Now the host interface might be able to transfer data you know, 10 times quicker than that or 100 times quicker than that, but actually it depends on the speed of the memory, it depends on how well that interface can be utilized. Now, of course, in the future, what we're hoping is for faster memory on the cards. Maybe we're looking, of course, at faster read speeds, but maybe the write speeds will be slower because reading from the memory, of course, is much quicker than writing to it. But what this new specification gives us is the possibility of really ramping up the, uh, pos the speed possibilities for the humble SD card. Now, at the same time, there is one other change that happened with the SD card 7 uh, specification, and that is now we are able to have cards up to 128 terabytes. With SDXC, we can have up to two terabytes. Uh, and now with the new specification, we can have SDUC, which allows us to have up to 128 terabytes. Of course, this is all theoretical at the moment, because there are no 128 uh, terabyte uh, cards around, but the, the interface, the protocol allows that kind of addressing, that kind of access to that kind of size, so 128 terabytes. So it will be good in like, say, you know, 2030 or something, I don't know when, to have a kind of a humble SD card that's kind of got 128 terabytes on it that can be accessed at 985 megabytes a second. That sounds pretty good. But in the meantime, of course, when these cards do finally come out, they are going to be expensive. There's going to be a premium that you have to pay for them. But as it was, I mean, I remember when I got my first SD card, I think it had like 32 megabytes on it. I mean, I was like, wow, 32 megabytes on a little memory card. This is amazing. So obviously things are going to change over the next years, maybe over the next decade, until we get to the point where cheap, high capacity, fast memory is available that you can stick in an SD card slot. And that's going to be uh, pretty interesting. Well, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. If you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up. Also, please go down to the comments below and tell me what you think about this new SD card interface. Are you looking forward to faster and uh, higher capacity cards? Do you think price is going to be a problem in the short term and what do you think about the long term? Also, please share this video on social media as we're trying to build up the community here at Gary Explains. Please don't forget also to subscribe. And well, that's about it. I'll see you in the next one.